Come on in. Where have you been? This is Neil. Say hi, Neil. Hello, everybody. Now, this is the incredible sci-fi museum here in Allendale. It's an incredible thing. It's got a work in progress. Somebody with a... It's just like touching my own stomach. <laughs> and this whole place, though, is, is your passion. Yeah. It's your dream. Yeah. And it's in the oddest place on earth to put a science fiction museum. Yeah, absolutely. Well, interestingly, the uh, Deborah Watling, who was Victoria and Doctor Who, her family used to stay in Allendale every year. And there's a letter that she corresponded with the lady who lives in Allendale. So there's a genuine connection. It's a tenuous link. It's a tenuous link. It's a tenuous link. But I'll go with it. But the great thing about <laughs> this is every now and then a Dalek keeps insulting me for no apparent reason. And it's fantastic. Mm. If you've ever been a fan of science fiction at any level, first of all, this guy will probably know more than you, and he will blind you with science, because I've learned more about science fiction in the last couple of hours than I have my whole life. Mm. But it's not just science fiction, although look at the stuff that he's got in here. Mm. Let me just show you something that, to most of you at home, you'll think, what? But to Neil, and especially to me, mm -hmm. head blown, and it's this thing here. Mm -hmm. Tell us about it. You've got here that this is Prince yeah. Baron's guard helmet from Flash Gordon, yeah. Conquers the Universe. Now that's 1940, yeah. yet yeah. the base of this yeah. was in my all-time favourite film, yeah, The Adventures of Robin Hood, Olivia de Havilland, mm -hmm. Errol Flynn, mm -hmm. kicking, mm -hmm. and they added a bit of something to make yeah. it like kind of spacey yeah it, 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 i think it was it was the it was the classic studio system you know you'd have your medieval helmet box and this was made for um robin hood it was then reused without the top on as um in, in charles lawton's hunchback of notre dame in 38 wow. and then finally obviously because you know they were always trying to save the budget it was they would put this top on which Re looks like it. yeah it looks like a lampshade off my local cinema i was thinking and it's a space helmet it's one of the two in this picture here and I, it's a bit of sci-fi magic absolute magic but every step that you go and if you move along yeah, yeah, so yeah. we can let everybody have yeah. a look at this from the incredible Beneath the Planet of the Apes, what a 70s absolute classic. You've got the actual outfit mm. for the, from the Planet of the Apes. I mean, the outer limits, the, every big sci-fi mm. name. The movie 2010, Prometheus, for mm -hmm. heaven's sake. Mm -hmm. Aliens, and tell us about this thing. Yeah, yeah, well this is a really interesting piece because it started its life, if, if you like Starship Troopers and Robert Heinlein's original book, which I do and love it, uh, this this is one of the front arachnid claws which actually killed uh, one of the characters vests we have in actually here right. but then it was redressed for the prequel of the thing now john carpenter's the thing yeah, yeah, is an yeah. amazing film it and it, it's a stunning film and they made the prequel which i actually think it gets a lot of flack and it's actually not a bad film right, right. but this was this was basically one of the arachnid claws made by adi and it was redressed and it's all sort of fiberglass got an armature in and they sort of frost damaged it because it gets burnt in the film and they put spikes on and it's just I mean, to me every time i get something like this it never uh, you know fails it's to astonish super me super cool <laughs> my goodness look at these guys this is that doesn't look comfortable. No. <laughs> he is a 19 I think, early 1900s Arctic vampire. And, right. uh, yeah. With no teeth? Yeah, yeah. No, no, because they sort of sucked you. Oh, they? Yeah. <laughs> sort of sucked you. Yeah. I wasn't going to talk about that too much. But no, we'll yeah, leave yeah. that alone. Yeah, yeah. Imagine it. But once again, in every direction, there's a something. Look at this, and a creaky door. We could get have a creaky door in a place yeah, yeah. like this. Yeah, yeah. And, and then you come back around to the front again. Yeah. This is... I've had to make the most of the space. No, absolutely, you know, I see that. Um, and I think people will come and they'll think, God, that was that was small, but you kind of say you haven't packed everything there's into There's more it. Uh, things in here than there was a, at the Centre for Life in Town, there was a sci-fi exhibition on. They had, I think, 39 costumes. Well, there's 200 items in here, over 200. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it was just that, but there, you, they were spread out. You sort of walked metres between things. I always just say, when you come here, you don't have to walk far between exhibits. No, absolutely. You know what I mean? And I've also thoroughly researched every one because whenever I've gone to a BBC one, often it was just like, you know, there's a monster, there's a jadoon, there it is, there's a picture, jadoon, and it's called a jadoon. Whereas what I want to know is who made it, how it was made, it, you know, I want to give some, some credence to the people who have spent hours making well, it. Well, you see, to me, yeah. I, I love Doctor Who. Mm. I was one of those kids that ran home from mm. school to mm. watch William Hartnell and mm. Patrick Troughton and John Pertwee, yeah, yeah. and I've kind of got the, mm. the, the, the mm. a loose order, then 
you go and do well i'm growing up i've met girls this is that i'm not doing this anymore yeah, and yeah. then you come back to it mm. later in life and it, they did scare you witless mm. yeah, yeah. back in the early days mm. but i wouldn't know the the minutia that, that you've got in here yeah. but it's amazing and the fact that you can say oh i remember that sh oh what was that and then you mm. can read all about it in yeah. each one yeah yeah uh if you are a sci-fi head to any degree it's this is one of the places you've got to come yes they've got daleks outside yeah how many daleks have you got because there's two of them outside right i've got three but uh the reason we've got this one here i mean do you want me do you want me to do you want this do you want a brief so, yeah bottom line is, come on the school on the basic the dalek on the other side of the wall is a new series dalek i made it i've had a doctor who club for 25 years right and the basic thing with that was um, we made a Dalek. It, 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 you know, we watched classic year of Doctor Who. We watched some Bailey Dalek, and it, I brought it here to open the museum. And we had to put a little sentry over roof over the top. I remember it. Because, it was yeah, a wooden thing. Yeah, there. and it was very. It was made by an artisan and craftsman up the road. It was lovely. And to be honest, the council walked past and missed it on their first swipe because they didn't even spot it. But the thing was, it had MDF in, and you can't leave MDF out. So we then got the full wrath of the council, because this is a listed building. I, I, I did point out that Blandford House, the Discovery Museum, has a Challenger 2 tank from 1970s, <laughs> which <laughs> has nothing to do with the Discovery Building, its original true. purpose. That's so true. I pointed because that out. Because it was up. the co-op. Yeah, right. It's getting wet, can I just... Yeah. yeah. So, so it was that, it was basically... Yeah. 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 So, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. so I was pointing that out, that, you know, because that was one of the arguments they said, that this had nothing to do with the building. And I said, well, yes, yeah, so it's not it's nothing to do with farriers, is it and our horses sure. but at the same time these buildings the, the history of these buildings the ground floor was a business if you look at Alston buildings mm -hmm. the Georgian houses they were, yeah, they, were yeah. they were always a business and all we're doing for the 21st century we've created a little business that's relevant today and will bring people in and there was right to be fair because there's been a lot of mudslinging there was a lot of the council were on our side and were just like what you know this is lovely you know, yeah, and um, but it basically was not the league about a Dalek. Well, I mean, just, was, just really the number of people. Who, right, I, I had a, I had a slight, kip, a, a small kip this afternoon up there, and the nicest thing is I hear people coming past, and I hear children going, oh, what's that? and I could hear the excitedness, you know, the tar, tar, you know, and it's just lovely. There's just uh, it's harmless, and it doesn't affect this building. I, I even had English Heritage came and said because I've done all the stonework, and they even said you've done an amazing job restoring what was an eyesore. It was an eyesore in the village's place. It was because you had the, this was full of Flooded. water. Yeah, full of water. The, the wall. It was just. It was a button. There was patch of the ceiling. How long did it take you before you got to, to open this thing? It was about five years. Four, Shame. five years. Yeah, yeah. Five. yeah, yeah. This, this yeah, is yeah. all down to passion again. Yeah, yeah. Passion, and yeah. the reason that I love this place mm. is because it's it's from that. If five people in a year mm. who have the same passion as you do about mm. the subject come here and get blown away, yeah. it's worth it. Yeah, I had a little letter from a little lad today who'd come last week and he'd written from Surrey and he loves classic Doctor Who and he just, I can't remember what he said, but he'd drawn a Silurian on the envelope beautifully with yeah. coloured paper and it was just like, we're just like, wow, yeah. it's worth it. Do you know what I mean? It's worth it. If you've, done, if you've brought happiness to people, that's, that's yeah. what it's about. And I know you're an art teacher. Yeah. Mm. Tell us about all things ghostly because apparently yeah. on your top floor because where mm. this house is haunted yeah this uh we don't know whether the museum is going to find out tonight mm. um but you've given us free mm. range in your house which yeah. is a beautiful house what's the story of the 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 death there was a death in there and yeah other people have experienced yeah. stuff on your top floor well uh, yeah i'll take you first of all my experience i worked in here in that the vault i was working in there angle grinding till right. midnight right right after work I did hear voices in here and what was more interesting was I went to see a medium right my, my parents had died years ago so I was quite interested sure to see um, you know what, what what if I could hear from my parents really but they said this medium had said where you're living now there's a lady on her, and she said you're doing a lot of work aren't you you're working you know and she's really pleased with what you're doing now it was interesting because this house for many years had become neglected right badly neglected sure and one of the pre-owners had ended up dying in the next door up to basically this was a pub next door right and obviously they'd gone back and forth to it i mean really you could almost join them i mean apparently the vaulted room which has got all the marble things in that was connected to the the vault continues in the next door house right and goes right through under the pub and those children in the village could remember running right the way through. Right. But I had heard voices in that vault. Right, whisper, right. Whisper, you know. But you've got to always think it's the middle of the night. It's you're in a vault by yourself. You sure. Know, you know. But I'm not. I'm quite. You know. I'm not. You know. I was a scientist. You know. Broken yeah, yeah. science. Yeah. But, but it's interesting. Somebody died here, though. Yes. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was the guy who'd who'd owned it, and he basically did die in the room, literally like diagonally there. Um, and that was probably about oh gosh, 10, 12 years ago. Oh my goodness! So, but, mm. who got the ghostly experience on the top? That was some right. They were. We've only got a minute left. So. Yeah, that was a family who basically had lived here years ago, in sort of like oh gosh, uh, 70s. They they hated going on that top floor hated it because there was something going yeah. on but yeah. we're going to have to have a look Neil, yeah. first of all nope. bless you switch all your lights off yeah well, this is now belongs to us for the next yeah. hour or so no worries. then we're going to hunting for trolls and all kinds hey it's going to be a great night <laughs>